Okay, everybody ready? Then we should start with the last talk for this day, the monitoring the uh, virtual environment uh, with OpenMS and VMware. Uh, how many people using uh, VMware? Yes, I think most of them. So it was, um, for our case, it was... Um, the reason we uh, use uh, VMware is for students and student projects. So we have here at the campus running uh, VMware infra infrastructure. So VMware also sponsors the university with a VMware educational program thing. And so they are doing a smart, smart thing and investing, uh, giving students uh, their equipment to get them pretty early on the on the needle to to bring the, the commercial stuff in the companies. Um, so for this reason, we used all, we go this way and said, okay, we have a VMware virtual infrastructure to run here on the campus for um, uh, scientific projects and also for uh, students, if they want to play with some strange OSs, then they can ask for a virtual machine and an IP address and then they can play around with and they are they sign for the responsibility about the, the virtual machine. And uh, we are on the, in the position to monitor that stuff. And I had with uh, Jeff uh, uh, at the FOSDEM, uh, we had a talk about uh, Puppet integration stuff where we can uh, use the new provisioning system in OpenMS to, to import all the nodes from a Puppet setup into uh, OpenMS. And so uh, we came to the idea, why not using quite the same technique to import all the nodes and host systems from a uh, vCenter into OpenMS automatically. So that was the first step we, we did. And if, you, um, if, you, if we thought about uh, monitoring the uh, VMware infrastructure, so we had quite the idea we have to run the, the VMware educational program here, so we are responsible for this stuff. And we, uh, as I said, we are responsible for all this stuff. And if you start doing all these things with SNMP, then you run in exactly this kind of issue. You already, you have SNMP running, you have OpenMS running, you see ESX is based on a Linux machine and VMware is going to using Linux everywhere. And you think, yeah, you can use SNMP now and you will fail like this. So you're sitting in a rocket, try to get to the moon, and you sit in the wrong rocket. <laughs> so the SNMP support in ESX is pretty poor. So you will not get any useful information. Polling with SNMP is pretty painful. And um, with current open source solutions, it's quite incomplete. It do, you have to do a lot of hacks with Perl, for Nagios, there are a few plugins where you can hook on the ESX and use the Perl API and monitoring all the stuff, which is pretty, pretty hard and in big environment could be pretty painful. And um, if you look for um, commercial um, products like, um, uh, I will not um, mean the, the solar stuff, um, they have quite nice features, but they are closed source and you can do nothing um, in open source area with that stuff. And so we thought, okay, we use OpenMS. We have a lot of people can coding here and know Java and love free software and OpenMS. So we hooked on the train and said, okay, let's do an OpenMS integration with the VMware stuff. Our wish list for the integration. The first, first point was being able to import all, all nodes and all host systems from a vCenter into OpenMS automatically. So you don't have to deal with all the stuff in monitoring, so you can automatically import all, all the things. Um, monitoring the ESX host system hardware status, uh, every certified um, host system or every certified um, VMware um, vendor um, has to provide the, uh, provide the hardware status uh, to the ESX system. And the ESX, uh, VMware ESX system can uh, give you the status for the hardware. And uh, this, the third thing was uh, getting all the performance data which you can see in the vCenter from the host systems and from the virtual machines also in OpenMS in the data collection. So we tried to, to target all the three, three topics. So first of all, we had to learn how vSphere and 
all the components work together. So we spend a lot of time uh, investigating in VMware in the VMware API and how the, the, the architecture looks like. So as a short overview, we have on the bottom line, it's a vSphere vCenter, which is responsible for all the managing stuff. You can add new virtual machines with the vSphere, so it's, it organizes all the things. And the vSphere vCenter has also all information about the, the status of virtual machines and the performance data and all the things you, you need to know about your virtual inf uh, infrastructure. And uh, which could be also very um, important is if you move virtual machines from, from one ASX to another one, so you can move these virtual ma machines around. So you have to deal with a lot of uh, special use cases in, in a virtual environment. And the, sec the second thing is to get an idea how the communication has to be look like if you try to monitor uh, the virtual infrastructure, uh, what possibilities you have uh, to, to get the information. So for the virtual machines, it's pretty easy. You can ask the vCenter for a virtual machine's performance data and even the status, and you will get the information back to, the, to, to your um, system, in this case, OpenMS. But if you monitor the ESX system, it's a little bit more complicated or a little bit trickier because the, v, the vCenter has not directly the information. It handles just the authentication and the security issues. So you go uh, first uh, asking the vCenter, I want to know the uh, information and the status from the ESX host system. And it will give you back an authentication ticket and with this ticket, you can ask the ESX system directly for the hardware status because it's dependent on the hardware which you, are, which you have running. If you have a Dell, HP, IBM server, whatever uh, underneath, so it's very, very um, dependent on the hardware. But this stuff is also covered by an API which is called a VI Java. That's a Java library provided by Steve Jin. It's one of the guys who are developing uh, at VMware. And we used exactly this VI Java library to uh, use um, to, to abstract all this communication stuff. So we have in OpenMS right now a dependency on VI Java, which does exactly uh, this kind of communication here. So we don't have to take care about that things. And the VI Java was in uh, was an Apache 2 license, so we had no problems to hook in this uh, library into our source code. So that's pretty nice. Um, for provisioning, what we have extended. Um, which of you guys uh, use the DNS provisioning? Provision, yeah, two guys. Everybody a little bit familiar with the DNS provisioning, three guys, yeah. Where you can point a URL against the DNS server and you can import the whole zone into your OpenMS. You can synchronize the DNS zone. Um, we extended it in the same way. We just not used the DNS colon slash slash as a URL. We just introduced the VMware colon slash slash URL. And you point the URL against your vCenter and then OpenMS talks to the vCenter and imports all the nodes from, from this system. During the import, we flag all nodes as virtual machines and host systems because OpenMS has no distinction about uh, or has no idea about a virtual machine or um, a host system. OpenMS just knows some kind of nodes. And uh, we, during, we imp uh, during the import, we provide special services which are um, provided to virtual machines or host systems. So the, the hardware status monitor is just on a host system and uh, the others, um, the VMware power state monitor is just on a virtual machine. So we don't um, make any other distinctions here. We just uh, assign special services on the, the nodes during the import. And um, we assign also from which uh, vCenter we, we uh, received the nodes. So we have uh, each virtual machine and each host system has in the, in the asset info a tag where it is referenced to, to the vCenter. So if you have more than one vCenter, you can uh, easily distinct which virtual machine comes from which vCenter. So if you have more than one, then you can use that too. 
And yes, that is the OpenMS specific stuff. We assign different services for status monitoring, and we use these services also for the data collection that CollectD can go out and can grab the performance data from a virtual machine or from a host system. So that is also um, a use case for um, assigning specific services on that stuff. So that's a picture of how all this stuff looks like. So the name is not very creative, I'm quite sure, but this is uh, for a virtual machine. If you have a node, a virtual machine, then we assign a virtual v VMware service and a VMware managed entity service. And this uh, VMware virtual machine service is used by CollectD to get all the, da the performance data for the virtual machine. And this is a special CollectD um, implementation which asks the vCenter directly. And then we have a second one, which is the VMware SIM host system. This service, it's only applied on host systems during, during the import. And we do the data collection here for all the numeric sensors from the ESX host system. And this is a, a separate implementation because in this case, he asked to ask the uh, vCenter for an uh, authentication ticket and has that, then to um, establish the connection to the ESX directly. So we have two, two data collections, one for virtual machines and one for um, the host systems. And um, this, two, this service here, the VMware host system service, is, the, uh, is also used for um, data collection from the vCenter. So the vCenter itself has also performance data about the host system. So that's not... That's just for the numeric sensors, and that is for the system which has uh, the VMware Virtual Center from a host system. And the, the, um, the host system is also used for PolarD, so he can also poll for the hardware status, and if uh, the ESX host system has a problem or has some kind of an issue with, this, with the status, then uh, this service goes down and gives you an idea what, what problem the host system has, like a, a rate died or whatever. Yeah. Temperature or fan stuff uh, is, is in a critical state. It's the same thing you can see in the vCenter itself if you go to a system and then you have also this, uh, this, uh, this um, traffic light uh, status. And that is the, that's used for this monitor here. So the good thing is you don't have... You, don't have to take care about that stuff. It's automatically done during the import. All the services will be assigned by default, uh, so you don't have to take care about that stuff. Just to explain a little bit which service is used for which use case. And we, uh, I've added also metrics which service um, type, uh, which service type and name is used for a host system, and which service is applied to a virtual machine. And then uh, you have here a little bit in detail what functionality is behind the service. Okay, if you start playing around with that stuff, you have to prepare your vCenter first. And the first thing is you need, um, or it is a good idea to copy or clone the read-only account. So if you go to your vCenter, you can clone the read-only account. We, don't, we just need read-only access. Um, we will may, maybe we will have in the new topology stuff, uh, which Taurus showed this morning, where you can add new uh, customized utilities to the topology map. Maybe we can bring in some functionality to maybe make a snapshot from a virtual machine or something like that. Um, if we extend that part, then it's maybe possible that you need here more permissions for OpenMS. But currently, the, the current implementation just reads the data from the vCenter, so read-only access is quite enough. So you clone the, the, the read-only access, and you need one additional permission, which is called SIM interaction. The SIM interaction is necessary <laughs> to get the information from the ESX host system, so that's a very important thing. And you have to add the permission to an OpenMS user, so you have to create in your vCenter an OpenMS user give them a, a username and a password, and then you can use these credentials for OpenMS to get the interaction. Yeah, we assign the privileges here. 
we have here our user and assign the read-only privileges. We, we leave it just as it is. It's a read-only role. And then we come to OpenMS and we have to configure OpenMS to get all the information. Anyone an idea which configuration file this is? If you see this strange requisition dev stuff. Provision D configuration XML, correct. In Etsy OpenMS, it's the provision D configuration XML. And this is the place where you can point OpenMS or provision D to a foreign source of uh, nodes and import things uh, from a foreign uh, source. And in this case, we have here created three uh, entries. Each entry points to a virtual uh, a v center. So every entry here represents one v center. And we have uh, three v center. One is used for, um, for um, sci science projects, one is for students, and one is our development environment. So we pointed um, the requisition to. Um, to uh, the URL, which is here. I think we c you can read it not really good here, but uh, if you look at the slides, it's just uh, VMware colon slash slash IP address. And this represents the, uh, the vCenter IP address. And this is a name which is used in the requisition. If you go to manage requisition groups, then you will see this name here, which appears as the requisition name. And uh, in the second line, you have a schedule, so um, we, uh, you can provide here a cron schedule how many times you want to synchronize OpenMS with your, with your vCenter infrastructure. If you have any questions, then just, just ask. Okay, yes? Uh, so, my, this, this, as you got virtual machines, how do you assign yes. the IP address of those virtual machines? Uh, yes, we read uh, from the vCenter. It has all information about the virtual machines, even the, the network interface addresses. And we create for each um, IP address, which is in the database from vCenter, we create also an interface in OpenMS. And you can then assign the normal detector behavior against these IP addresses. So they become... So even if the, the IP address is assigned on a separate server? Yes, it, it doesn't, um, it, doesn't uh, um, it is not necessary to, to discover any IP addresses. We grab all the information from the vCenter's database directly. So e every information is provided by, by vCenter, even the IP Where interfaces. Is right? Yes, that's right, that's correct. You need the VMware uh, host tools on the virtual machines. That's, that's important. Because uh, without the virtual uh, the VMware tools on the virtual machines, you will not have that that information. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, that's very important. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, that's um, the other part of the configuration we have. We have um, the VMware config the second line, which has like um, a mapping for the vCenter and the, authentic uh, the authentication, the credentials. So in the VMware config, you provide the vCenter's IP address and the username and the password OpenMS should, should use for. So um, if you have uh, three vCenters, you type in here for in the VMware config the IP addresses for your vCenter and the username password and doing that for every vCenter. And OpenMS will use that too. It's the same behavior like the WMI config. That's uh, exactly the same thing. You configure um, for uh, the domain uh, in Windows, the username and password and the authentication. And the VMware SIM data collection contains all the configuration you need to grab all the data out and provide RD files for it. And the same thing is for the VMware data collection config, which has all the data for virtual machines. Okay, and then uh, we have also the VMware graph properties where all this RD stuff lives to represent the graphs. In the polar configuration, we have two 
two monitors. One is one monitor is the VMware SIM host system monitor, which checks exactly against the host status. That's the stuff um, which checks for the hardware status on the system. And we have the VMware managed entity, which is a polo against the virtual machine. If somebody pauses a virtual machine or stops a virtual machine, this service can go also down here. Why we have a virtual machine monitor? Maybe it's uh, quite um, unnecessary to have, uh, if somebody stops a virtual machine, um, you should be notified because the IP address should be not reachable or something like that. The good thing is you can um, monitor a virtual machine with ha without having any IP access to it because you can import the virtual machine and you can monitor the virtual machine status without any IP access to it, which could be quite, quite interesting. And that is just the configuration of the prologue, uh, which is not quite complicated. I think it's just a retry and a timeout. It has no specific parameters here. Um, the same thing for Collect-D. For Collect-D, we have uh, three additional entries. Um, we have first the entry for each virtual machine. We grab here, we have a, a dedicated default virtual machine configuration packet which has all the metrics we grab out from a virtual machine. We have the host system, specific parameters which come from the vCenter about the host system and the host system itself. Uh, from the host system, this uh, sim stuff is like temperature, fan speed, uh, and all this this very hardware hardware related stuff is comes from the VMware SIM host system. This metrics are provided there. So this is how it looks like if you import all the stuff. So you have uh, three requisitions here, and in each uh, requisition you have then uh, the related nodes. In this case, it's uh, 157 and 23, and all the vCenter nodes are imported into the such requisition groups, so you can also de define specific detectors you want to run against them or yeah, whatever you need here. So everything, an idea how the requisition import works and the polling stuff works, okay. And if you look uh, inside such a requisition group, then you will see we use the foreign ID to identify from which vCenter comes the virtual machine. That is very, very important identifier so we can see, okay, this is the virtu virtual center and that was the internal VMware ID. This is the, the internal ID vCenter has from this node. And that is important if you move in uh, in... Um, in a vCenter, you move a virtual machine to another ESX host, so you can, with remotion, you can move virtual machines between host systems. The VMware ID stays always the same. So you can always identify the virtual machine. It doesn't matter on which ESX host, ESX host system the virtual machine is running. So we collect always the correct data from, from the virtual machine. Sorry, yes. Uh, the events of the access could change as well. So, how are you handling that? The, the, what? The address of the host could change. Yes, the vCenter. If, yeah. if you change the IP address from the host system, you have to fix that. Because you become a new foreign ID here. And it will end up in a new node ID in OpenMS. Uh, you can also use host names. Yes, it's just an example. Yes, but you can also use host names. Then you can fix this problem. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and um, yeah, we tried it also. Uh, we have one example. Um, if you check out the latest code, and uh, we made it also possible and tried uh, IPv6, using IPv6 here at the vCenter, which works also. So you have to, if you use the IP, the six addresses, you just make the brackets in the URL or using also the host name if you want. So that works too. And it imports also the IPv6 addresses. If you have that assigned to the virtual machines, IPv6, then 
they will also import it into the system. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. And how does it look like? It's a little bit... I try to use the same colors in the RD graphs like the virtual center uses in, in his stuff to... Um, yeah, we can grab all the performance data like CPU, memory, statistics in uh, in RD tool. So we have all the RD stuff for that. And the tricky part, we created um, a tool like uh, Marcus created that for JMX. I don't know if you, um, if you, which of you guys using using JMX uh, monitoring a little bit or have an idea what's okay. There are a few. And Marcus created uh, a tool to to grab all the the, met, the the mbeans from a JMX instance and create a config file for you, so you don't have to do this stuff all manually. Uh, Christian created the same tool to grab all numeric sensors from a ESX host system and create automatically the configuration files for you. So it will create all the XML config in OpenMS and also the SNMP graph property stuff with a very basic line graph. So you don't have to put that in all manually. So you will have a, a very nice, uh, a, a very complete graph setup, but they are looking not very nice. I st started a little bit to, to make the, the first graphs, looking, let them looking a bit, little bit more uh, pretty, but there are tons of graphs in the, in the VMware stuff, and I can show you later. So uh, if you have an idea which metrics are pretty useful, then uh, we can pimp the graphs a lot, I think, because there are, there are many of them. Um, before we can play around a little bit in, in, a, in the environment we have here, um, all this stuff is available in 1.11 for Snapshot. If you check out the latest Snapshot, yes? Five minutes? Okay. Um, it's available in 1.11 for Snapshot. And... You have, in the binary directory, we have um, two tools. One is the VMware sim query tool, which you can run against your vCenter, and it will give you a feedback which sensors are all available, which, uh, which uh, sensors your ESX host, sim, host system support. And this VMware config builder, you can run against your vCenter, and it will create all the configuration files in OpenMS. Um, for VMware 3, 4, and 5, they are already in the system, so you don't have to take care about 3, 4, and 5. If you have, So we created that configuration already. If we have uh, newer s version numbers uh, in, in VMware, then we can run this config builder against the VMware, and if they have new metrics or changed metrics, then we can easily recreate the configuration files for that stuff. Yes. Hi, Ronnie. Um, are you doing a sim query? Is that a DMTF sim? Um, it, it, yes. 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 Yeah, it so it could be used with other providers of VMware? Um, behind that, uh, behind that um, binary is the, the VI Java thing, so I think that's very specific to uh, against the VI Java. It could be special. Because it, uh, I think the, the authentication stuff is all handled by the VI Java API. I don't know if that works for every DMT. So that could be. But it's a DMTF uh, sim, yes. Okay. So. We go here to our system. That are the virtual machines. We can pick one. Maybe we can go for project server, maybe. So that's a virtual machine. You see here the services. This is the IPv6 address, which is just a local link. Just doesn't do anything. And um, where we need some stuff is, uh, or a little bit, takes a while to load all the graphs. Um, 
is uh, we, we need a little bit help to building all the, uh, the RD graphs because they are pretty simple blue lines right now. So that's not very... Um, there are a lot of graphs here, like this one here. That's all the, 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 the metrics we collect in RD files. And um, that is the point where we have to make all nice, useful metrics out of them. Because the, the current configuration tool it creates just uh, for each metric a simple line graph that you can see something. And you, but this uh, this is uh, I think uh, currently the heaviest work to make uh, important and very nice readable uh, performance metrics out of them or nice RD graphs. So that's uh, where any invitation to people spending time to make nice graphs for RD tools. So you're very welcome. I started with a few of them, but it, it takes a little bit of time to figuring out which metric has which meaning and which gives you uh, very good uh, information in monitoring. Okay. Um, we can have a no look uh, against... Yeah, the appliance itself, and that yeah, that this one has this one has IPv6 address here, and yeah, I think it's the same. They have all this, the same graphs right now because they don't have any. That's from the SNMP agent itself, but here this uh, all this. V center graph graphs has to be tuned so okay any other questions yes um, I import my virtual machines and I'm already monitoring the virtual machine uh, in OpenMS yes, yes. in a provision what happens I mean are the two uh, entities merged into one because they have the same thing right or will they be captain as it two nodes um if you monitor the virtual machine already, um, then there will be two nodes because you have one node ID for the old one. And if you start the provisioning, then they will become a new node. So you ha will have them twice. Um, you can, if you want to keep the RD files, you can move the the ID. You can move the RD files to the to the directory. Yes, um, it is a little bit. Uh, yeah, you can also make an update on the node ID that you switch the node ID in the database. Yes, but that's so you keep to so move all events and all the alarms and stuff over to the other node, which is which, which is possible. And would it be possible to import only the node, only the hosts, the um, Yes, you can. Uh, the import you can put in filters in the. Provision D config XML, there's an example where you can filter on specific uh, attributes. And in the vCenter, you can assign a, a customized attribute to a virtual machine. And you can put a filter on this attribute so you don't have to import everything. So you can also say, okay, only where the customized attribute OpenMS monitoring is true will be imported. There's so then you have a little bit more control over the, the import, yes, that's possible. And in the provision D, look in the provision D config XML, there's an example with, with the filters. You provided a lot of examples on filters you have. Even just powered on virtual machines or stuff like that. Yeah. Yes? Yeah, except VMware uh, is openness able to monitor other virtualized solutions like XM or KVM? Um, we have now um, we have one request for KVM right now, uh, and I hope um, maybe the Google Sum of Code can help to bring Dustin in another topic. <laughs> uh, Dustin is one of the students here, and he played a lot of uh, around with KVM stuff, and he is or um, better uh, libvirt. I think libvirt would be maybe it's easier to go against that one. And you cover maybe a little bit more. Yes, exactly, yes. 
But um, yeah, we we choose VMware. It's uh, most of the people using that stuff, and so it's just a start. But you can easily um, adapt the behavior to to other implementations. Yes. Just yeah. Yeah. Most yeah. of the other The easiest thing is always to start with the provisioning part because it's pretty the, the provisioning system is pretty straight straightforward in OpenMS and is very um, very well developed against REST uh, interfaces, so you can use the provisioning system as a very powerful REST interface, so you can create a, a tool which grabs all the information out of Xand, building the requisition stuff and pushing that stuff in, in the REST interface of OpenMS, which I think that's uh, starting with the requisition part is, is the, I think, the, the, first, um, the first way to do it, and then looking for the data collection. Data collection is most, most of the time the trickier part. Yes? If I had um, the SNMP specs into the <coughs> definition, I assume we'll pick up SNMP and all the guests. Uh, 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 if, if, if you add the SNMP specs into the provisioning definition, will it detect SNMP all the guests? So. Yes. Yes. It will be, uh, it's, it's quite the same behavior. Um, you will import the IP addresses detecting the services, and if it's reachable, then we will also collect SNMP data. So it's additional. So, it depends on the reachability of the IP. Are there any plans to make all the mess multi-tenant so that people from one guest don't see graphs from one guest? What you can, yeah, you can use the web ACL feature currently for this uh, issue. Um, I think you can provide um, the, the web ACL feature as a kind of uh, grouping nodes together and giving them a view just on the group of nodes. So you can assign a user to a group, and the user can only see the nodes which are in this group. And with the provisioning, you can maybe you can assign a policy and say, okay, every requisition assign this policy with this uh, category on this node, and on the second V center, you assign a policy against the nodes, and then you can divide them by... Um, yeah, provisioning them with node categories. Or different <coughs> node categories, maybe, yeah. Okay. Seems we are almost done. Some other questions, ideas? Okay, then I would say we see us uh, this evening. Um, yeah, keep fresh and see you this evening.